Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to congratulate the organizers on the timeliness of this conference. We're meeting today when there is unprecedented opportunity and also a great deal of urgency for impact investment to make a positive difference at home and worldwide. As you know, this is a week of the Davos meeting and they are of course meeting virtually just as we do. The World Economic Forum just issued its Global Risks Report for 2021. The top two impact risks are one, infectious disease, and two, climate. I'm quite sure these risks will be there next year as well. Maybe with failure of climate action regaining the top slot. Wherever they are in the world, people want to see the end of the COVID-19 pandemic. As problematic as the situation is right now, with more adverse social and economic consequences yet to come, we begin to see the prospect of gradual recovery. This is neither going to be easy or quick, and we know for certain that it's not going to be a return to exactly how things were a year ago. Uh, this conference is a good opportunity to reflect on what the new normal could be, and how the field of impact investment itself will be impacted. These days, the world needs impact investment like never before. We've seen a strong upward trend for some time, fueled by a confluence of increased investment, investor commitment to sustainability and the more ready availability of capital. The conditions are now optimal for meaningful and profitable investments, for economic and social recovery, and for a sustainable future. There is an abundance of investment opportunities where planet, people, and profit motives can be aligned. What the world is going through in this difficult period will influence not only the scale, but also the nature of impact investments. Our projects are selected and designed for maximum impact. Healthcare has always been an important target for impact investment. With the pandemic, uh, a more complex picture emerges. We understand better how investments in other sectors also have health impact. Existing public transport facilities, public spaces, schools and housing may need to be retrofitted to reduce health risks. It could, for example, be necessary to install better ventilation systems or rearrange narrow spaces to avoid crowding. And for sure, all new infrastructure investments must seriously consider and quite possibly modify design criteria to minimize risks of infectious spread. It's also clear that investments in actions to reduce carbon emissions and to adapt to negative consequences of global warming will continue to be major growth areas. The pandemic has demonstrated how interconnected we are. Of course, you have to look after your own family, your own community, your own city and your own country. But a narrow approach doesn't solve the problems of our independent, interdependent world. As we have experienced, virus spreads not only within, but also across communities and borders. And wherever CO2 is emitted, it stores in the atmosphere for 300 to 1000 years and ultimately affect people wherever they live, as well as future generations. Science also tells us that we have a short window of opportunity before the damage to the planet and mankind is irreversible. The COVID-19 pandemic and the climate crisis are teaching us that solidarity is not merely an altruistic basic human value, but it is actually in the longer term interest of serious investors to do the right things for society. All investments must be carefully examined to ensure their full positive societal and environmental impacts. The Sustainable Development Goals for 2030, which were endorsed by world leaders at the UN five years ago, have been path-breaking 
in building commitment to our common goals. The pandemic is a major setback with huge human costs. The rebound will require strong collaboration between countries and between the public and private sectors. Alone, we can only do so much. Together, we can do a lot. We often talk about sustainable development as a marathon. And of course, we have to think and work long term. But right now, we need to sprint because we are in a hurry to recover from the pandemic and to reduce greenhouse gas emissions before it's too late. Ladies and gentlemen, I've talked about growing volume, adjusted type, and increased pace of investments for maximum impact. And look forward to other inputs during the rest of our meeting. Again, a big thank you to the organizers and to all participants in this meeting. I wish everyone a healthy, happy, and successful year 2021, as well as the upcoming year of the Ox. Senior Inquirer, Kung Hei Fat Toy.